I understand what he's saying. So Vekko, essentially what he's saying is the uh, his people here is specifically in reference to those who will be finally justified, the ones who will be with him forever. And so it wouldn't have in mind the ones who were saved for a time and then lost their salvation. Right. So I would I would say uh, for new here is, I would say for new here is like relational. So like a relational yeah. knowledge. So who yeah. for and that yeah. will be consummated with eternal eternal relationship. So that's okay. who he's so talking about. My yeah. my question for you would be uh do you mind if we turn to Romans eight really quick? Sure. Okay. Uh Romans eight twenty nine through thirty. So here you have that golden chain of redemption, right? Where it says, those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed into the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Right. <laughs> Given this chained link, this inextricable link between all of these five texts. <clears throat> How is it possible for someone to be justified if they weren't foreknown? Okay, so I would take it back to 29. I'll say, uh, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. So mm -hmm. if you don't follow, if we don't follow along in the sanctification process of being conformed into the image of his son, then we cease to be the foreknown. But my my question was very specific, though. If you were, uh, how can you be justified if you were not foreknown, right? Because your view entails that you can be justified and yet not be among those who were foreknown, because your view is that the foreknown ones are those who will be finally justified. Correct. And so my question is, how can you be justified if you were not foreknown in this text? Right, because right. so foreknown I don't, I don't is that... directly linked to predestination called justified and glorified. Right. So I think in 29, this isn't like a the type of link that can't be, I guess, failed or broken. So I would say for him... For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And this this whole thing, 29 and 30, is laying out the plan of salvation, is laying out how people who ultimately make it to heaven, what that process looks like. But right. I wouldn't say that the individual tenets of this process are guaranteed. I think that Paul is just laying out what the process is for those who do make it to heaven. Are any of these verbs accomplished by us? Are any of these accomplished by us? Um you know, I could definitely take the position that it is God who, well, first of all, uh, Philippians 2 says it is God who works in you, right? So it is, right. our sanctification is accomplished by God. Like he is the, I don't even know if this is the proper way to use this, but he is the primary, you know, force in this, the primary mover, if you want to say. Um, he's the primary inspiration for us being sanctified. But also in Philippians 2, Paul also says you should fear and tremble. So we're called to do something as well. Even though God is working to sanctify us, we should fear and tremble and, and work with God in that salvation. And I don't see that as guaranteed here. Even though this is the plan for everyone who will go to heaven, I don't see the individual tenets that are described. One is sanctification here. I don't see that as being guaranteed. And one of my arguments for that would be Paul encouraging us to stick with God and to persevere through suffering and to not fall away. Uh, earlier in the chapter here in 17. So in verse 17, he says, and if children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with them, that we may be glorified together. So there's a conditional on being glorified, right? So I, I think I that's, that's, what the, that's what the encouragement but, is. And later in the chapter is an encouragement to get to that glorification. And then this is the encouragement about the steps and the process that someone who does make it to heaven. So that's how, how I would link all of uh, chapter eight. I understand that, but wouldn't that make us part of this process, right? Because uh, you're trying to construe this 
as something we have to work towards to glorification, right? But this text says that God is the one doing all of these verbs. So how do you square that circle? Yeah, I definitely think it is like we have to we have to comply, right? So God is what God um he may work in us and draw us to be convicted, right? But if we ignore it, then we're not complying with what God is trying to do. He's trying to sanctify us. But there's also a choice here that we have to comply with. So that's the process. I, I would give God the positive um, you know, credit for the, the positive, the good that happens, the sanctification. He's convicting me. I'm like, oh, I got to do better. I got to stop this. And that is God working, God sanctifying. But I still have to comply. It doesn't negate that factor. Okay, so... Let's let's focus in upon the the descriptive phrases here. For whom he foreknew, he also mm -hmm. predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. Mm -hmm. Could we agree that the exact same group who are foreknown are also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son? Ultimately, yes. Uh, I would say that Ultimately. it depends on it depends on what he means by foreknown here. So this could also be talking about a future culmination. This could be also talking about a relational knowledge whom we foreknew that he would spend eternity with, right? And that's uh, consummated mm -hmm. and culminated in us going to heaven and spending eternity. And so those if, who do get there, who we did actually foreknow, they will be conformed and they will complete this confirmation, uh, this conforming, sorry, okay. not confirmation. <clears throat> so if it's refer if we're going to grant that, which I'm, I'm fine with, we grant that then the mm -hmm. exact same group who are foreknown are also predestined to become conformed to them to its end. And the exact same group is then called justified and glorified. Right. So that is in that sense, an inextricable link to, to the extent in which you just articulated it. Is that not an, an inextricable link ultimately? with respect to those specific individuals, those people will persevere to the end. I, I def, because I actually he knows that, that they yeah, ultimately right. will be with him. Right. So again, I think that Paul is picturing the process of salvation here as an encouragement to verse 17 to persevere. So I, I think this is more so a picture of what salvation for will be uh, for those who are ultimately foreknown, and he's encouraging this process of sanctification and perseverance. So I, I, I would just harken back to this as a picture of what will happen to someone who does ultimately make it to heaven. But I wouldn't say that, again, that the individual tenets, I wouldn't concede that, that those are guaranteed. Well, the, the reason why I'm asking this question is because uh, I, I appreciate our exegetical dialogues, because this, I think, is a lot more fruitful, by, by the way. Yeah. But... Yeah. But when you focus in on, on the phrases, though, and I, I got you to agree that foreknew is referring to those who will ultimately be with him forever. Those who God knows will be saved in the final analysis. Right? Yeah, those That's who foreknew. That group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And final so salvation. he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. That's another descriptive that, phrase. Right. Does that have to be guaranteed? Does the, does the verse as it's written necessitate that being guaranteed? Or could it be he's predestined, well, this, but, but you may not make it? Well, my my point that I'm trying to uh, convey here is that these are all descriptive of the same group. So whether or not you think it's necessarily linked is another question. But it's the same group, right? Because it's those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. So it's the same group. I'm just trying to show you that I, I think there is an inextricable link because it's all referring to the same group. And so in verse 30, Moreover whom he predestined, he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. This is where my issue comes in. <laughs> he, he says in that last phrase, and the ones whom he has justified he has also glorified and right. so to me 
I don't know how you can say there are, there's a subgroup of justified ones who are not foreknown because it seems to be the reason they are justified ones is because they were called predestined and foreknown. Did you catch my uh, my point, D? Even if you yeah. disagree, but can can you sympathize? No, I, I definitely with see your, I, I see your point. I do think it is a strong passage that looks like you know eternal security. I think it is one of the strong. I wanted to passages. jump in real quick. If you can go to yeah, verse thirty-five, yeah, wait, just wait, below. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. do, do you mind? Uh, I I have a short amount of time, and and. Uh, D is someone I really respect in this area, so I would really like to complete this really quick. And you guys can dialogue afterwards. A Calvinist but, and a conditionalist. Wow, this is crazy. Well, I have a lot of respect for D. He he does things yeah, that I really respect because he's yeah. he yeah. debates exegetically. When I go to this text and you see those whom he justified, these he also glorified. That's where yeah. my problem comes in because I don't see how you can say that there's a subgroup of justified ones that will not be glorified. Yeah, I definitely see the point you're making, and I will definitely concede that it's strong. This is this is a strong passage. Yeah. My my honest interpretation of this as a con uh, conditionalist is that this is a passage of encouragement. You know, uh, and that kind of starts with this this whole. Uh, Pericope starting from 17. So he's encouraging them to persevere. And this is a very strong statement of encouragement. Uh, he's encouraging them to persevere. And he's saying that this is, you can, I mean, it sounds weird from a conditionalist, but we also believe this. It's saying that you can trust God. This is the process that's going to happen that God wants to happen, but you need to persevere. So I'm encouraging you that those who he justified, he glorified. So make it to the end. Okay, and you would actually agree with that, but you just wouldn't say that that could that could go awry, right? So uh, what I would what I would say <laughs> is uh, I believe this predestination involves the very thing you're talking about. That is their perseverance. They will persevere because they've been predestined to be conformed into His image, which just involves their perseverance their perseverance, their trials or tribulations, their calling, their justification, and their glorification. So I think all of those are packed into that predestination. I think that's why this is a stronger encouragement, because he's saying this is exactly why you can take heart in verse 31. What right. then you're shall we say It's more than an encouragement. Thing? It's a guarantee. That's what you're saying. So it's uh, right. a I level above an encouragement. It. Right. I, I believe he's grounding this encouragement in the decree of God. Obviously, that's we're, we're going to disagree, but mm. uh, that's what I believe about the text. But uh, I appreciate the dialogue, man. Uh, I I have tremendous respect for you, and I'm looking forward to our dialogue on my podcast sometime, brother. I appreciate it. I definitely like talking. This is you know very difficult passage. I mean, we kind of got to concede sometimes when something looks like a difficult passage when it looks like the other side, when it is a passage in your guys's, on your guys's court. So and I believe that, you know, you exegeted it well and I appreciate it. I mean, I appreciate all the, all the compliments guys. Thank you so much.